We're going to do a knife caddy. Talked a little bit about it. But that's what we're going to do. The reason I wanted to do that, there's several reasons I told you. Number one, people like them. I mean, just these sitting in here for the last couple of weeks and people coming in and out, oh, I want one, I want, you know, I mean, they love them. And they're not hard to make. They've got some peculiarities. But if you look at it, again, it's basically just a deck, it's a drawer, except it's on an angle. And that's the, primarily the reason I wanted to do this, is to deal with the angle and dovetailing it. Now, these are cut on a 15-degree angle. That's a fair amount of splay on it, but I just find it looks pretty good. And uh, then, like I showed you, we did the, the center in this is put in with a little sliding dovetail right here. Now, this is just my popper mock-up, but I can tell you something. When I'm done, it ain't going to be a mock-up no more. Man, I got me some popper bottoms. I'm going to put it in there. And I, I'll sand it and I'll make it look like walnut or cherry or something. And I, as I told you, she, Crystal said that she was going to, she wanted to take and paint some flowers or whatever on it. And we can do that. But let's get a new camera angle and then we're going to look at some, some of, the, of the dovetail. And that's the first place we want to start is getting it dovetailed up. Now, you're going to have to stay with me on this, okay? Now let me show you something. I think I told you, one of the things when you're dovetailing something on an angle is you have the lift that's based on the angle. Let me show you what I mean. If I line the bottom of this p dovetail, this pin board up, if you look very carefully, you can see right here how much it's off from not going in. That's because we're dealing, if you look at this, each one of these pins is cut on an, it's got an angle to it. So as it goes in, you see, again, you see how low it is? But as it goes in, it lifts into place. So we have to deal with that. Now, so here's what I want you to do. We're going to cut to the chase. Now, one of us made a mistake. <clears throat> huh? No, it wasn't you. It wasn't Crystal. Because what I normally do on these is wherever I want to land, meaning whatever I want my total height to be, I simply add about a quarter of an inch. And it doesn't matter how big or whatever I'm doing, that kind of seems to work out. So I cut these at three and five eighths, and I should have cut them at three and three quarter. So I'm gonna be a little snug here. You cut them at three and three quarter. We want the overall of this is about fourteen and three eighths. That's just kind of where I come in. I like the looks of it. You know, you could go 14 and a half, 14 and three quarters. Not, and then the width of it, and you notice I'm going at the long point, is 10 and a, about 10 and a half. Okay, 15 degree. And the measurements again, 14 and three eighths, 10 and a half. This was supposed to be 14 and a half, and I don't know what happened, but nevertheless, kind of adjust but again that's the long point and then you want to cut your 15 degree angle on it now we have to be careful now this is where you got to listen close because we're cutting these overly wide you want to add at least a sixteenth to your length do you understand in both cases? And the reason for that is, is because actually what's going to happen is once we dovetail this, we're going to be coming back and we have to cut the angle on the bottom of it. And we're going to actually be trimming this 
to get her half pen right. You, you can drive yourself nuts trying to calculate it, figure it out, and do all kind of setups to get everything just right. The easiest way to do it is do it a little bit large, then we come back and we trim it on the table saw to what we want. Okay, that just keeps you from overcomplicating yourself and having to go through all this setup. But we do have to be careful. Now, I've got it set up for the pen. Right here. I'm in the tail. So what I did, when I set this up, what's going to be critical is that I want to get a full pin on the top and on the bottom. Actually, I want a little bit more than a full pin. Because again, when we trim this angle, if we look at, the, if we look at this one, see how small my half pin got on the bottom? I don't want that. <coughs> And even in this, make sure I get it on here right. And even on this little test setup, what I'm going to get is when I trim this and that angle, you see, you see how that half pin is showing? It's not a lot. So by cutting a full pin on... Look at the inside though. Again, that's because of that angle. So to have a, a good half pin and a little bit more is not a bad thing. Okay, and you're indexing from the bottom on that. Now let me explain that. You want to take this bottom and you want to get a full pin plus about a sixteenth if you can. All right, and then just run it. All right. Now that's on my jig. The same thing applies ever how you cut these. I mean, we, you know, in our when we did the small drawers where we were doing it on the t on the uh, router table, no difference. But you still want to index from the bottom, which is your short point, and you want a full pin. Now that's going to probably leave you just a little bit of a whisper of a tail, like here. but we can just simply pair that off with a chisel. I'm not quite that tight. It would have been easier for me if I was. Now, the stock is all 3 8 material. I don't want to go any less than that because then I've got to put a bottom in this and that gets a little tight in there when you're trying to pen nail or screw it in. Let me get set up here right. Alright. Now you see, right, you see how thin my little bottom tail is? That little bit. See, I want you a little heavier than that. I'm about a 32nd out here. I want you about a 16th, and you'll have the same thing on the top. Now, in your, if you're, again, if you're using my jig, you can cut it from both sides. It's not going to matter. And you notice my little stop block there, it's got to be cut on that same 15 degree angle. Now, again, that little tail, I'm just going to break it off, and I'll take a chisel and go down, pair it right off. Not an issue. All right. Now comes the pin part. That's where we got to be really careful. Now let me switch jigs, and we're going to come back and look at cutting the pins on it. Okay, what I want you to do 
again, instead of as you typically would of just simply mating it up and drawing the pin, you can't do that. What you rather want, what you want to do better, is to set it up and come over top. That's going to get you as close as you humanly can to what you're going to want. Let me reverse this so you can, maybe you'll see a little better. I'm, I'm aligning down here, right here, I'm aligning the two, I want to try to line up this corner and that corner. Make sense? Let me, let me see if I can create a straight edge here. Alright, this is my straight edge. So what I want to do is when I come over, is when I come over top of this, I want to align my inside corners. See what I'm showing you? Kind of, kind of hard to hold it and show you here. I want to align the inside corners. Then what I can, uh, this is going to get you close. Once I align them, then I'm going to have to mark it on the outside. And this is where this will be my narrow part of the pen. Narrow part of the pen. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you, you notice I've got a scrap. I made it a little extra so I'd have some scraps so I could play with this and get my setup just as I needed it. I really suggest you do that. But this will get you close. Now, if I compare that to doing it the traditional way, I'm a good sound eighth of an inch, diff almost an eighth of an inch difference in the height of it. Now I'm already set up here because I played with it a little bit. I'm hoping you can see in here, I'm actually over a little bit on the top you can't really see it on camera but I'm over a little bit and I'm almost flush with the small part of the pen okay I know this sounds confusing but if you play with it a little bit you know make you an extra piece and play with it you'll get it it's not as difficult as it looks you know this is kinda like that inlay thing you know you gotta play with it in order to you know, get proficient at it. Now, as you can well see, now I've already got my depth, depth set, and I've showed you how to do that. Simply, you know, put a piece under, draw your line, and set your bit. I'm setting, again, I use a five millimeter pencil, and I'm setting at the bottom of the line. I want my tails and pins to extend just a little bit, so when I glue it up and I sand them, I get nice, clean pins. Now all I did was I clamped my stop block on here with a pair, with a clamp, and I just kind of wiggled and moved until I got it just like I wanted it. this is what the joint looks like right now but you have to understand to make this set this is where we're going to be coming back on the table saw and we're going to be trimming this bottom on that 15 degree and then we're going to be coming trimming this 15 degree the other way for the bottom I mean for the end for the same way to make it set flat so the, the more material we have on this bottom the better that's the reason I want a good big half, a good full pin here plus a little bit, okay? 
All right. I'm going to go ahead and run. I'm set up. I'm going to go ahead and run this side because common sense says we can't, because we've got a dovetail, we can't do like we did on the tailboard. We can't just flip it or else we wind up with a thin pin and a fat pin. And that means we're going to start making chairs or stairs or whatever you want to call it. So we're going to have to reverse and come back and do a, do another setup to cut the other side. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I've got more than one. I don't know how it happened. But, the, but <laughs> now these aren't spice chests. <clears throat> but as you can see, it's just a drawer with a twist. You know, just, just again, the main thing with this is that you just play with it a little bit and you'll get it. You'll, you'll understand. But the, the, the best trick I can tell you is that sneak up on it thing. And sneaking up on it means make it a little taller than what we want. And again, do a full half pin plus a little, and then we can come back and kind of true everything with table saw. I, you know, I know you guys out there, if you don't, I'm the only guy in the world that does it. I'll dovetail my drawers with a little heavy half pin and just a little taller than what I need. I'll get them together, then I'll hand plane a little bit and kind of flip them on the table saw, get everything lined up just right. You know, it doesn't, I don't always come in with all them fingers fitting just exactly perfect. So giving myself a little fudge room, and that sneak up on it thing is really smart to do. Okay, I'm going to run these, and we're going to come back, and we'll do the other side, and I'm just going to let you watch me set it up, just so, just so you see what I do. Okay, to get the reverse set up, here's what we do. In the case of my jig, the wide part of the pin is always to the back. But again, we're looking at the front of this. So all I'm going to do, which is the narrow part, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around and line it up. Even though I'm wider back here, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, especially on the middle pin and just making sure that I'm about the same on either side. That's a good place to start. That and have a clamp ready. Then, get me a stop block in here. Now it looks like I got a gap here, but that's just where I cut a little angle on that plan. We don't run it. Whoop. Wrong block. I do that all the time, don't y'all? I look pretty good. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at the, the thickness of this pin right here and here. Close enough. That'll work. 
But again, if you got to move it just a little bit, then you you know again having that set up is all important. All right. That said, I'm going to go ahead and run the other side. I'm set up. Then when we come back, what we're going to look at is trimming it on the table saw to get her fl bottom flush and make sure all of that's the bottom is right. Then our next step is going to be before we cut any design is to go ahead and do our little sliding dovetail for the center. Now, before I'll remind you of this again, but my center divider in this is six inches tall. This isn't. But let's think about that a minute. Again, sneak up on it. We're going to measure this as precise as possible. But because we're on that angle, if I happen to get just a little bit too short or something, because I'm, I'm extra tall, I can let it slide right down into that case right down into here to, till it fits perfectly, then all I've got to do is mark it and cut it off on the bottom before we do. The last thing we'll do is our decorative stuff. Okay? All right. I'm going to dovetail, and we'll be, when we come back, we'll look at trimming the bottom up and get them ready to go. All right. We want the next step. We want to get these things setting flat. So what we have to do is we're going to have to cut a back angle on all of the, the bottom. Now on the top of it, we don't have to do that. Let me show you why. When we put this together and we get our, all of our scroll work done, we're actually going to be rounding it over a little bit. And the round over takes care of any directional, you know, as far as the leaning in, leaning out, and all of that. It just doesn't become an issue. So all we have to worry about is the bottom set where we want it. Then, the only other thing we're going to do is, again, once we've cut our decoration, our scroll stuff, we're going to be sure that, you know, we'll nip this top a little bit to give our half pin and all. And if you look at my prototype here, again, you're going to see I just kind of left it. And the reason for that is, is that when I'm rounding these over, you know, when you look right here, there's not a lot of space. You know, this this tail right here on this, or the, it's just, you know, the pin board rather, it's just not a lot of area there. And if I bring that router over that edge, I'm going to be subject to chipping it out. And then the other thing is, is that when I bring them together, I want this joint right here to come in nice and tight. So I will just hand shape that a little bit. Some sandpaper and a rasp. So again, not a big deal. Now the thing you want to remember on this, no matter what, we've got, all I did was I used my actual piece of material that I cut as a gauge just to set my blade at 15 degrees. Now if you look at this, in order to make this work, we have to take the material off of the outside corner, the outside edge. So in order, and because the, the blade is leaned out, what you're going to want to do is you want, listen to this carefully, you want the inside up. And so when you're doing your pin board, the wide side of your dovetail is obviously your inside. That's what you want up. And what you want to do is I'm set to where I'm just barely taking this off. Now, if you got off on your dovetails a little bit, you may have to do the, the sides, then put it together and mark the bottom edge on the ends. Okay, just to make sure that you come in at the right place. And be very, very careful with that. And the way you're going to know is, you know, if this is sticking way down, if you got too far past on your setup, if you got too far past, and I hope you did, because of using that full pin, then you're going to have to cut your side, and then you're going to have to take your fence out and just, again, sneak up on it 
to where when you go together, you're fitting correctly. Okay? All right. Inside up. Now again, the object of the game is just to get it setting flat on the bottom. Just be careful and don't get yourself disoriented. Because if you do, you're not going to be happy. But I'm going to show you something. One of us wasn't paying attention, and so he cut the outside up. And when he did that, the angle's all backwards. So can you see it? I glued me a little strip on there and recut it. But don't y'all do that. <laughs> Last finishing class, I was telling the guys, I said, you know, it never fails. If I'm going to make a mistake, it's going to be either on a camera or doing a project for the show. It just <laughs> never, ever fails. And sometimes you're just like, eh. But it happens. All right. Let me change angles of the camera and get set up, and we'll cut some sliding dovetails. Sliding dovetail. Now this is exactly like we did it on the spice chest. No difference. I've got a fence on my miter slide on my router table. I got my bit in. I'm set at about, well I'm 3 eighths, so I'm actually set just a strong eighth of an inch or so. It's not going to take a lot. But the one thing I did, I went over and I cut me a piece of straight material that's exactly the length from point to point on the long side. Okay? And that's just simply for my setup. Now you notice what I did. I ran it, which cut, cut the notch in my backboard. Then I measured it and drew a center line. Then I set me up a center line on my piece of material and lined it up and I ran it. My test piece. Turned it around, ran it again, made sure I was dead center. Now it's a simple matter of run each one of my ends. Now again, Make sure you're square in here. And in this case, make sure you've got the inside down. Which again, is the heaviest part of the dovetail of the pin. And run them. Alright, very quickly I'm going to go run my other ones and we'll come back and look at putting it together. Yep, exactly what I want. Lined up center to center. Okay, we'll be right back. Tail cut, we got to make our pin now. Now what I want you to do is put your case together and pull it up tight. Make sure it's up nice and snug and square. Then you can do this with a tape measure, but it's a lot easier if you've got a fixed ruler. 
measure from the inside of the dovetail to the other inside on the bottom all right I think I'm about 12 but I think I got this one's one side's a little short on something but anyway because what happened was I started r running some material and just I was just grabbing scraps and uh, making them up and whatever however I talked to Bob close and uh, Bob said you know depending 25 30 bucks he can put together a kit to do them now the other thing we've got I'm gonna step in front of the camera is we got to have our bottom so just simply measure your case and you want to allow about half five eighths per side so that means you're going to add inch inch and a quarter to length and width I, I'm not sure yet I'm thinking just maybe a simple round over or just a small OG to go around the bottom of it and you know that's why I'm not sure exactly, you know, and that just makes your chest, that just makes your bottom big enough. <laughs> I'm leaving that alone, huh? I'm just leaving the bottom, that leaves your bottom big enough, we can kind of do whatever we want. Now, one of the things, I had some panels that, you know, I've got just enough to get one here. This is So this is kind of a... It's a scrap, but it's not a scrap. And I've planed them all down to half inch. And like here was one, a piece of tiger maple I had that had a big bark inclusion in it. But I'll put that on the bottom and I've got, you know, that'll do. Now these are one boards for the most part. I think a couple of them are glue ups. But that said, it would not be, it would probably be better to do a glued up bottom just for expansion and contraction and uh, so just make sure you get your, you know make your bottom you know and I'm gonna tell you what I, I'm gonna caution you on this people like these things so and once you get set up you know you can roll through them pretty quick you know they're not as difficult as they look and like I said you know you take a little bit of scrap material and you play around with the dovetails a little bit you can move on through them no question about it. I think we've got five going or something like that, plus the two I'd already done. So anyway, all right, now let's get to making our center divider. And what you want to do is you want to take that measurement. Like I said, in my case, it was 12 inches. So what I want to do is I want to take and lay this out 12 inches and the reason you're going for the bottom is because that's the easiest point I'm not going to be able to do that I'm about to mess up see what I did I may, see how close I measured to the edge of that board I'm not going to be able to cut that so to, to make yourself, make sure, cut this angle, then measure your bottom over and cut the other angle. All right? Huh? Um, how tall does it stand? Let me see here. On the original, where's the original at? I think it's, here we go, that one's shorter. This one's five, I'm about five and a half, something like that, five and three eighths, five and a half. And so I'm a little bit over six here, that's just because that's the way they came out. But, and I explained it once, and you'll see this in a minute, once I cut this, then I, if I'm off a little bit, it's just going to come down further into the case and I can trim that bottom and i got a perfect fit. 
I'd set sneak up on it. Always leave yourself an out thing. Okay, I'm going to go over here and cut this, and we're going to come back and set it up to cut the dovetail on the end. Be right back. Now again, exactly as we did in the spice chest, we got to cut our pin. Now one of the things, you notice I've got an auxiliary fence, just some MDF, and I've got the bit back under it. That's so that I can just, and don't change your height. You know, this is already preset. It's going to, be, you know, this keeps your height correct. It's just a simple matter of, you know, and if you look here, this is some of my scrap. I ran all four, tweaking it out, getting my dovetail exactly where I wanted it. Now, there's one thing I do want to, there's, a, there's one difference here. <clears throat> Because we're cutting on this angle, <coughs> you can actually get a little tear out easier than if you're just cutting straight in grain or flat grain. It's just one of those things that occurs whether you like it or you don't. Now, what I'm about to show you, <coughs> I'm probably going to get fussed at a little bit and told it's unsafe. But I have, I'm going to climb cut it. I have ran all of these. I ran the tiger maple, and I've had no issue. And the reason I have no issue is because if you look, we are removing a very, very minor bit of material. We're not removing a lot of material. So here's the way I did it. Now, the other thing you can do let me grab a clamp real quick. If you're concerned about the climb cut, you, you can't do it with clamps on top like I've got, but you can actually take, one, take a clamp like this, the twist clamps, and you can clamp it in and let the clamp sit right on top of the fence. And that gives you a whole lot of hold on power. But in this case, I'm wide enough and I feel comfortable enough I don't have an issue. So instead of going into the bit as would be normal, I'm going to go against the bit. I'm not getting any issue whatsoever. Now, like I said, I spent, you know, I did three or four tests to make sure that I was set up and that I'm fitting in my dovetail nicely. I want to be able to slide in without a lot of force. Now, the other issue that we're going to run into is because this is on an angle, we can't put this together. And the, the first thing that's got to go in is the center divider. tight there, or appear to be, maybe I'm not, yeah I am, I don't want to be that tight, let me see if it's just a fluke, no I'm too tight, I'm going to run it again.
I might not have held it as tight against there as I should have because I'm fitting now. Now once I go in, then sure I've got my angles right. You can flip. The, you can get these things disoriented pretty quick. All right, and I'm checking because what's going to happen because of that angle? This can kind of try to push me apart, and I want to make sure I'm fitting in nice. But as you can see, if this is loose, like I said, you can let it come down past, and again, because of that angle, it's going to snug itself up, and you're good. Then just trim the bottom off where you need. All right. The next step will be to cut our decorations and do our bottom. Not going to be difficult. Now again, one of the things I'm going to do on this is uh, we're going to do that round over. So that's going to give us that edge. Now one of the things when I was designing this and thinking about it, I've done them, and I actually just set this in here, and I use some little screws and a square peg to hide it, and you can do that. You don't have to do the sliding dovetail, but the dovetails are a nice touch. But then you notice, what, look very carefully on this end, where I've got this, this is a reverse Cupid's bow. Crystal, can you hand me that other one? This is one of the other ones I did, and this is a Cupid's bow. Kind of looks like a, never mind. This is a, huh? It looks like a bottom, but not wooden. Yeah. Anyway, so by bringing this point to the center, and I kind of did the same thing on this one, what I'll do is once we round over the handle, then you can, if you look very carefully, what I did was I just simply sanded this and kind of brought the outside to a point. So, you know, when you look at it, you don't have this big clunky heavy point here. And then we can just kind of sand this and blend it all in. That makes it match with the side. Now, one of the things I did on this one, and I'm going to change a little bit, is if you look at my sweep in here, I've got a lot of flow at this point. I don't have as much on the end. So I think what I'm going to do on the end, I think I'm going to do a little less sweep here and a little more here just to kind of keep that corner. And having those corners kind of come up is a look I like, you know. But again, you can make it any way you want. And, you know, like when I was playing with them, this has got a little high handle. I like the look of that. This is the one everybody liked the look of. This is one where I did a little lower handle and a little bit wider opening in here so you know it's all in what you want uh, so there you go knife caddies knife caddies time to make them pretty or as we say in the south purdy all right now here's what I did I took all my sides I mean I've got Anyway, and I simply double face taped them together. Now make sure you're even on your ends, flush on your top. All right, and I took my original pattern and I traced it on here. Now, found my center line. Now, if you remember, I told you in the last show, I wanted to reduce this curl right here. But one of the things you want to do is you want this to come, if you look at this, you want this to come up and flatten out on top. That gives us something, you want it to flatten out. That gives us something to be able to blend the dovetails in. So, and then because my length is a little bit different, I just simply lined up my center point with my center point and drew it, then that made me too close, so I just kind of moved it over 
so I can keep that flat spot. That's pretty important. So what I want to do, I'm simply so I'm gonna bandsaw this out. Then we can shape this one side. Then that'll be our template for all the others. So you know, now what we're going to do is we're going to put up the templates for you that are mine. Again, if you're a little short, narrower, wider, you know, just adapt it, you know, or you know, come up with your own design. That's even better. Okay, I'm going to bandsaw it and. Now one of the things I like by dip doubling them up, if you don't, I've got a spindle sander over here that I'm going to, I'll use it to finish up. I'll sand it to the line. Uh, but the thing of it is, is that by doubling them up, if you don't have a spindle sander and you have to work this, matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a, I'm going to show you something I maybe haven't shown you. Let me spy and saw this out. All right, I'm going to show you a little trick. I think that's in the magic of routers or something, or I may have shown it to you. I don't remember, but if I have, it's been a while. We got a lot of new people. You know, this is one of those things that I do all the time, and I just do it and don't think about it. So what I did was I took and I band sawed it out, left the line came back and simply took a rasp and rasp it to the line. But here's what I want you to notice. I didn't do the whole thing. All I did was about an eighth of an inch of the outer edge. Can you see that? Yeah, I mean, I just want to make sure you get it. All I did was set this down and just work that outer edge just on a slight angle and to my line with a rasp. I mean, it's very quick. And I use the coarse rasp. Just get me to the line. Now I'm just going to take a little piece of sandpaper and clean it up, smooth it up a little bit. You know, when you're rasping something, a form or a shape like that, as you well know, the issue is getting the whole, across the whole thing. All right, I'm going to set this for just, let me see how much bearing I've got. Hit. Yeah, I'm okay. I've, got a, I've only got about a sixteenth of an inch of the bearing that's engaging. That finishes up my cut. Now, because we did that little angle, you see that little line right there? Can you see it? Just a, it'll leave just a little bit of an edge. Okay? But as soon as we round it over, it's gone. I've got a nice, smooth, flowing line. No issue. Looks pretty neat. Now, what would be an alternative to that? Well, I don't know if you've got, you could take a flush trim, top bearing bit, do it on your router table, you know, and it, it's just quick and easy. So that's kind of one of my little things that I do all, like I said, I do it all the time. And uh, it's just really fast. Now what I'm going to do I'm simply going to take the only reason I'm sanding that little edge off right there is because I, I need to be able to flip this one and I want them the same I mean it doesn't take much of nothing to sand that little lip out and the only thing that causes that little lip is just a little bit of a space between the bearing and the bit just that little bit of space in there, that's all it causes it. All right. Set it up. Line it up.
Flip it. Do it again. And I have my profile. Now I see something already I don't like. Right there in that center. I've got too much point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce it a little bit. See right here where I kind of drew that? Just a little. I decided to make the point a little higher. I'm going to come back and reduce that point down just a little bit. Just make sure to keep all your lines flowing really nice. See what that looks like. I like that better. Okay, I'm going to go band saw it, take it to the line, and then I'm ready to do the others. All right, okay, band saw, be right back. Well, I'll tell you what, I went ahead and worked on this end, <clears throat> got it like I wanted it. Now, like I said, once we round things over, we'll be blending these little corners in. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Where's the rasp? Just want to... We'll just be breaking them off. Bring them down. And when we do that round over, when we do the round over, that's where we want to be careful in here that we keep our joint tight. So I never quite run it all the way to that edge because what I'll do is once I, I usually stop about right here and that way I can then sand that corner and blend it in. You'll see that when we round it over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Sherry put up, we're going to do a half pattern of the side and a half pattern of the end. But again, you just adjust to whatever size box you come up with. Again, do your own design, whatever. But one of the things you got to be careful about when you're doing the end is if you look very carefully You look very carefully where you got your notch right here for your sliding dovetail. Don't get real tight on either side of that because you got to have room so when you put this sliding dovetail in that you, you understand you don't, you don't want to get that point real thin because if you do that then it's it's not going to make a nice joint. See, you want to keep enough on either side of it to fit your piece of wood. Right here. 
Can we see that? You got it? Okay, you, I got it. Okay. Camera girl says she got it. All right. Now, what I got to do is I want to get my shape on my handle. Whatever I did with it. There it is. Now, the hardest part of the handle is this inside cut. Now, obviously, what you're going to want to do is set it up and get everything marked, get it all the way down, and mark your start and stop, mark your stop point. In other words, you want to mark it right here. Make sure you're all the way to the bottom and mark it. <clears throat> that's going to that's going to give you your stop point of where you want to go. So let me get this out of here and get it all completely in. And then what I'm going to do is do that. We're going to lay out this handle and cut it out. All right. So here's what I did. Put it in the case or in the box. Made sure I was down flat. Drew my point where I need to stop on each end. Then I took the handle pattern drew it in. Now you notice I drilled three holes where I need to do this cutout. Now doing that cutout you can do scroll saw coping saw I'm going to use a little jigsaw you know and of course, the hole is just going to let me get in. I just drill it on the point so I got better room to turn. Yeah, I got a fast. Yeah, I got a fast tool jigsaw. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Had it for a while. Nice saw. Yes. With that cut out, what I'm going to do, because I've got those sharp corners, I've got a, just a triangular file, big one, little one, and that's just going to let me get in those corners good, clean them up.
Now this is a case where the little trick I showed you with the doing just the edge and doing the the router bit, it'll help you. But because you've got that sharp corner, the bearing is going to stop you from being able to get in there very tight. So I just kind of rasp them and get done. This is a cabinet maker's rasp. It's, it's a Nicholson. I got number 49. I'll finish cleaning that up. But now I'm going to go to the bandsaw and I want to bandsaw my shape and, you know, sand it to the line. One of the things I want to caution you on is your exit point right here. Don't try to cut that perfectly flat. Leave it just, you know, 30 seconds or so proud. We can blend sand that in when we do our assembly after we get it assembled. And it just makes for a little cleaner, nicer joint. Okay, let me get this band sawed out. And we'll come back. And outside of sanding, we're going to be pretty, we're going to be ready to round over and do an assembly. I'm getting set up here for the round over. Now, one, now what I'm using, I've got a 3 16 radius roundover bit in the router. And that gives me a nice, that's going to give me a nice little roundover. Just, you know, basically just a, a bull nose just to ease it all up real good. Now, when you do your handle, obviously you're going to, because of the router bit, you're not, it's not going to come into your corners. And that's what I was cleaning up. Made me a little stick. It's just a wedge. See what I got? Got a little bit of 180 on it. And I went around the inside after I rasped it a little bit clean that up and then I'm using it along with my file this is a this is a pretty smooth file and I'm just using it to round over into the corner just to keep that nice flow going that's what we want Got a little bit more, but you can see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is following it round and blend it all together in there. Then we just simply round everything over. Now, I mentioned this and I realized I didn't really get into it enough that you for you to be able to if you look where I've sanded this top right here. See my little half pin? Well, all I'm doing, this is one I haven't done. And you can see how I'm protruding up here over the top and things like that. So all I do is lay it down and take in my random orbit. <laughs> I just kind of blend all that together. Just go easy with it because what's going to happen, you're going to be kind of rolling this way and rolling that way. Just keep, just keep everything flowing nice. Once you have that, you're ready to do your round of the, round of the. 
Now again, stay off the very ends of it. Not what we want to do. See what I'm showing you? Just don't take it all the way across because once we put it together, we'll blend all that. Same thing when we're doing <clears throat> all of this. Again, think about that. See, you can't, if you go up here where this dovetail is, then you're going to create a gap in your box. Same thing inside here. You don't want to go all the way up or you're going to create, you know, you're going to, you're not going to get a good fit. And you see, I'm, see how far I am above? I'm a little bit too much above. Again, what will happen is once I'm, once it's together, That's going to allow me to come in and blend this whole top together. I'm just going to blend all of that right in to a nice seam. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, take my little piece of sandpaper, and I'm just going to round it up in here into the corner. And then like I showed you on the other one, on this one, all I'm going to do is then kind of back sand this edge up like this, same way to bring that to a point so that it looks more pointed than it is. Now, on the sides, I can run it the full length because, that, you know, I don't have any issue out here. But then, but I, you know, I can't get all the way to the end because I don't have a bearing and I'm going to nick it. So all I do is, you know, prior to assembly, I just sand it off, blend it in. Do your dry fit, get everything blended up, looking pretty nice and you're ready to glue it. Now make sure you sand all the interior components before you put this together. If you don't, you're not going to be happy. None. Then, to clamp this thing up and to glue it together, just take you some scrap, anything. Cut it on a 15 degree for the straight side. Turn it around. Got it? You're going to do your two ends to your center divider. Clamp it. Let it dry. Come back. Do your ends. Now, when you're doing the sides... you want to do, 
It's going to be the same thing. Notice my call. I've notched it so that the so that the dovetails can protrude through it a little bit, just like we do every other case, every case we do. One on each side, a little bit of clamp pressure. Make sure everything's together this way, and you're glued up. Make sure it's square, obviously. And then the other thing you want to do is make sure you're particular with your glue on the inside corners. It wouldn't be a bad idea to run a little bit of tape right down through here to keep that inside just as clean as possible. All right, that done. That's building the case. All right, on the bottom. I think I mentioned I might play with a little bit of an OG or something. I wasn't sure. And I did. I played a little bit with one here. Just as a... And I just really didn't... I didn't like the thin edge on the bottom. I just didn't care for it. So what I did is I took a 5 16 radius round over. And I set it. I ran a little bit of this. And that's what I like. I like just that simple. I just like it. Just it just works. Now the other thing. Now the problem you're going to have because we've got a half inch bottom here is you're going to have kind of a sharp edge on the bottom. We don't want that. So once you've routed it, simply take a piece of sandpaper and get on here, and you can see what I've done. I eased that edge heavily. You know, you could probably take a little eighth inch round over and run that edge if you wanted to. I just found it just as easy to sand it. Now the, so, and, but when I put this on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep myself about an eighth of an inch of a flat area along the edge, a reveal, like that. I'm not going to try to go right to the, to the little step there. Now, attaching the bottom. Once I've got it all done and lined up, I'm going to trace this bottom. I'm going to trace it out. Then, again, remember, this thing is leaning out. This, this side is running on that angle. So what I'll do is take a little bit, take a little small call just a little end of this. Let me cut this real quick. I'm just going to take a little small call like this and I'm going to set it on here in the center and I'm just going to use my drill bit. This is way too big a bit and I'm just going to use it to drill it on an angle. Right in the center. Then I'm going to do a very small countersink on the bottom. Then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a number four uh, three quarter inch screw. Number four, three quarter inch. Basically the same thing you get with, a, with actually the ones I'm going to use, I get from Horton Brass. It's the little brass screw up in there. I'll pre-drill it. Go, be careful. Uh, now the way I'll do it is I will actually assemble the bottom, get it screwed in. I'm going to put a screw here, here, here. Three on the sides, one in the center of each end. I'm going to make sure when I drill that hole that that screw is a little bit loose in there, in the hole. That gives that little bit of expansion and contraction room. That's pretty much the way it works out. Uh, I'll do the same thing in the center. I'm going to, I'll draw the center, I'll drill those holes straight so that they'll come up and attach in to my bottom. Just go very easy. I don't think you want to go, I don't, I know you don't want to go past the number four screw. Because uh, again, that's only, you've only got three eighths of an inch here. So make sure you pre-drill it and, you know, then I'll clamp everything on and I'll take a very small bit and, and run up through those holes and drill up into the side just to make sure I'll assemble it, then take it apart and finish the bottom and finish the case separately. 
that's the way we do everything we do as much as possible. I like finishing components and then putting them together. That's pretty much the caddy. I mean, like I said, it's not difficult. It's just a little bit, you know, it's a little time consuming. Then comes that other thing. And I can't tell you what I'm going to do yet because I don't know. I know, Crystal, we're going to paint on some of the poplar and whatever. But I still, I'm not so sure that I'm not going to sneak in here and do some kind of little thing on the end of it or something. Some of that string. I might do it on one. Just, to, just, huh? You have so much time on your hands. Yeah, I know. I've got a lot of time on my hands, so I might do that. You know how it is. Okay, guys, that's pretty much the caddy. Now I got to go through and finish up all these components and parts and whatever today and get them ready to sand and get finished. All right, that's it.